The soft-boiled detective contains content that may be alarming or upsetting to some listeners. There are depictions of violence and murder, frank portrayals of sexuality, discussions of abuse and mental illness, and adult language. Episodes may contain sudden gunshot sounds. Whenever you're feeling ready and able, we hope you'll join us. The year is 2404. The cold winter winds of Unalaska, Alaska blew against my face. I was headed to my city. M-A-I, not M-Y. An important distinction. It's the city of dreams. People confidently walking around every day, knowing that they are safe. The police force is the best in the world. It protects us from the triad, the cartels, and the Britneys of the city. HBD was narrating to himself again, despite all of the work we still had to do. I'll miss this. The snow, the people, the food. Ugh, not me. I'm looking forward to a new dome. One that isn't set to freezing cold. I like the cold air. It's cool. You know, I'm proud of you for doing this. The world needs good cops. I want to make a difference, Atlin. Looking forward to it. You'll help get me off the hook if I get in trouble, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's today's date? It's March 3rd. Right. I'm still getting used to writing 2420 for the year. The boss wants me to keep a log of... my activities. Can you back up? You're breathing down my neck. Just get it over with. Crematoriums creep me out. It'll be about three hours to cremate him, Johnny. It's Jimmy. Jimmy the chair. I don't care how long it takes. I want ashes. You hear? Any funny business from you, and you'll get one right between the eyes. Right. The year is 2420. This city is my city. The city of dogs. And those dogs commit crimes in this city. People walk around in fear every day, looking for someone to save them. The police are just as corrupt as the triad, the cartels, and the Britneys of the city. I was in my office with Hans, my assistant and one of my closest friends. He had known Atlan and I since our high school days and now worked as my secretary. HBD, we have a new case. I filed it as the missing teddy bear. A child's lost toy? No, no. Teddy bear is another word for dia. Dia? Diaphine, mind-altering drugs. Hmm. Also, a wife wants you. Huh? To follow her husband. Ah. Delivery coming up. Ah, uh, this package is addressed to you, HPD. Huh. What is it? It's a new type of cremation box. Hmm. I don't know who could have sent me this. No one I know had died recently. It should have a name on it. Oh my god. What is it, HPD? It says... Atlan Rockford. Atlan is... dead? It's not... unexpected for him. Rage and grief bubbled up inside me. There was a part of me that wanted to avenge my friend's death. But first, I had to find out who was behind it. March 5th, 2420. I arrived at the Ashes to Ashes crematorium to find answers. An ordinary crematorium lobby. Signs about federal law prohibiting burial. It's a law that's been on the books for over a hundred years. When we ran out of space for cemeteries, the government mandated all corpses be cremated. A hologram of a cat-like creature appeared before me. Hello, I am Dirge, this building's secretary. Welcome to Ashes to Ashes Crematorium. May we cremate your dead today? <laughs> uh, not today. I'm looking for Tiffany Coffendaffer. Can you tell me where she is? I'm afraid it is against protocol to release information about our employees. AI is notorious for being a stickler for the rules. 
I reach into my jacket to pull out my electronic badge. Dirge, the cat-like hologram, blinks. He's processing it. Protocol override. She's in the back with her ovens. Tiffany Coffindaffer? Oh, holy sh sh You scared me. I apologize. Tiffany Coffindaffer, white female, approximately 5'9", 25 to 30 years of age, hazel eyes, brunette. Her left arm is cybernetic, an old model. Did you just describe my appearance to yourself? No. Okay, whatever. Can I help you? I have some questions for you. Are you one of the family members? Hmm? Of the guy I'm in the middle of burning. Like right now? This guy right here? No. His partner? No. Then who the fuck are you? The name's HBD. Detective HBD. HBD? Like, happy birthday? I hate birthdays. Children always mocked me. They always called me happy birthday. So it's just HBD? I'm looking for information on a recent death. I just burned the bodies. I reached into my pocket. Yeah, I can see you doing that. And I pulled out a small cube, a newer model of urn, and placed it in front of her. I can see- It had Atlan Rockford's name etched on the side. Atlan Rockford. Do you recognize the name? How did you get that? It was sent to my office. Why would it be sent to your office? I don't know yet. Unknown sender. Someone is sending me a message. I need your help decoding it. I can't do anything to help. This box came from this crematorium. And? Who brought him in? That's confidential. Only the family... The family didn't even know he was dead yet. That's news to me. Ms. Coffin-Daffer, I just need to know who brought him in. You're not a cop. You can't interrogate me. No, but Get if... Get out! I'm a private detective investigating a murder. With your cooperation... Murder or not, it has nothing to do with me. The only crime committed in this crematorium is the crime against fashion you're wearing. Oh. Is there a dress code in here? No, I was making fun of you. Why? Because... Shut up and get out! Huh. She injected fun into an otherwise bleak situation. It reminded me to laugh. <laughs> an admirable trait. And then I replied. I agree that men's fashion has always been behind women's. By your appearance, you place a lot of importance on your looks. Is that a crime? No, an observation. I have reason to believe that Atlan's death is connected to the triad. If you're not a cop, then I have no legal obligation to talk to you. Dirge materialized before us. I can see. According to the Victims Justice Act of 2410, private detectives may investigate without police approval in a murder case. Detective HBD has every right to question you. In good faith, I'll speak with the police and get official permission. I'll be back tomorrow, Ms. Coffin-Daffer, but I offer one piece of advice. If the triad is blackmailing you, I recommend reaching out. I can help. Dirge, close up shop. No more customers for today. Yes, ma'am! Hans is a bit of a wirehead. He was tapping into Tiffany's personal devices, including her wetware. Normally, I feel morally opposed to tapping into someone's personal, private thoughts like this. But it was important. We should talk to her about having a WPN. WPN? Wetware Private Network. It gives your cybernetics privacy. Ah, do you think Miss Coffin-Daffer sent the box? No, Hans, but she's the only one who can place who was there the night Atlan was... Creamy? Cremated. He was dead when they brought him to her. She wasn't going to ask questions. You know, Atlan was so deep in all the killing and the banging. Banging? Yes, with the guns. Shooting. That's what I said. Atlan was in very deep trouble, HBD. He was our best friend, Hans. Ethical, cockological nature and all. I don't give up on my friends. My guess is Coffin Daffer is being threatened or blackmailed. What do you think she'd be blackmailed with? Dirty laundry, skeletons in the closet. She may have broken a law they could have had her arrested for. Can't imagine what law she would be breaking. Ah! Her wetware has turned up memories of a friendship with... 
Francesca Du, the daughter of the Tianlu's dragon head. <laughs> He's a private eye, Tiffany. Mama says they always sniff around and then give up. That's easy for you to say, Francesca. You weren't the one being questioned. I've been questioned before. When your mother is the head of the Triad Clan, they harass you all the time. But, you know, it's going to be okay. You weren't involved in anything, right? Of course not. There you go, then. It's a murder investigation. It's just protocol. Francesca, what would you be questioned about? They think I know what the Tian Lu is up to. Like, she'd tell me anything. As if. I could see if Mama could help you out, actually. She might be able to get this private eye off your back. It is a perk of being her daughter. I can handle it. Okay. How about we order a pizza tonight and watch a flick? We haven't had a girls' night in forever. Yeah, okay. I'll find what to watch. I feel like an AR tonight. Is that okay? Ooh, you can get the pizza! Use your Borg phone. Your, your arm has one, right? Order from Antonio's Pizza. Upside down bacon pizza. Deliver as soon as possible. Charge to my account. Order placed. Hey, I'm going to make us some drinks. Scotch mist, like usual? Please. Fridge? Yes? Make two drinks, please. Scotch mist and San Huachio. And call my mother, please. Affirmative. Hello? Hello, Mama. I need you to help out a friend. That'll be the pizza. I'll get it. <gasps> Delivery bot? What happened to you? Attacked. Attacked. Not well. By who? A message. I have a message. It's Jimmy. Jimmy the chair. Listen good, cop and dapper. Don't say anything to the detective. If you talk, you'll get the chair. Get it? Because I'm the chair? <laughs> and I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, Jimmy the chair, out. Why am I so threatened by this idiot? Hey, Tiff, is that the pizza? Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the pizza. Leave me here. I will return to shop. Madam Du, you sent for me? I need you for an important case. Oh, wow, thank you. Madam Du, I'm, I'm honored you trust me so much to carry out your orders. You're the only one available. Oh. I want you to keep an eye on Coffin Daffer. Francesca says the detective is asking questions. Don't worry, ma'am. I, I sent Coffin Daffer a message. I don't want you to send her a message, you tortoise egg. I want you to worry about the detective. Oh. Pesci will help you watch over her. Pesci? The hot plate? I, I don't know if that's a good idea. He's so... Rash. Are you questioning me? No, ma'am, no. Go to the crematorium tomorrow. And if the detective's there? Kill him if you have to. Yes, ma'am. Really not looking forward to working today. Sorry, we're not open yet. Hey, watch yourself, Coffin Daffer. Pesci, get back in the car. If you squeal, we'll make you squeal like a pig. That uh, didn't sound as badass as you think it did. We She's inside, Pesci. She can't hear you. Ugh, today can't get any worse. Ms. Coffin Daffer? <gasps> what are you doing here? I apologize, Miss Coffin Daffer. I allowed him inside. Were you programmed to let him in? Yes. Oh. I spoke to the police. I placed a small chip on Dirge's desk. It projected a document. I can see what it projects. 
So you have police permission. Good for you. I still don't have any information. When did you get your cybernetic arm put in? What does that have to do with anything? It's an old model. I get it. This is where you talk about how we're both bored so you can bond with me. It won't work. I don't have any cybernetic parts. You're pure, huh? That's a rarity these days. Why'd you ask about my arm? I just want to understand who I'm talking to. Jesus, look. If you want to search the place, go ahead. I just want a description of the person who brought Atlan Rockford in. I don't know! You know something, but you're scared to talk. What would I be scared of? Oh, for fuck's sake! Heshi the hot plate. No for catering to Aunt Louis Vince and his hot temper. Damn it, Pesci! Ah, Jimmy the chair. I should have known you had your fingers in this pie. Ew. We told you not to squeal, Coffin Def. I wasn't, you idiot. You just told on yourselves. Pesci the hot plate rushed towards me. I easily sidestepped him, and I struck him in his nasal septum. Now that he was out cold, I gently lowered him to the ground and made Why sure that- Why are you announcing your every move? But I, I'm, I'm not. Damn it, Pesci! <laughs> Jimmy the chair pulled a gun on us. We ducked behind a nearby counter. Stay down, Miss Coppendaffer. I pulled my own gun out of my holster, and then... He dodged my shot, but he's at a disadvantage. Dirge materialized in the middle of the room. I peeked around the corner to see him. I apologize for the interruption, but I have called the police. They shall arrive in under two minutes. Damn it! Ugh. <sighs> I knew you'd fuck this up, Pesci! Thank God he's leaving. We have to get out of here, Miss Coffendaffer, before we have to deal with the police. Right. <laughs> let's use my bike! Um, let's take my hover car instead. Uh, mm, hmm. They're gonna kill me no matter what. Looks like you're getting what you wanted. I'll talk. Don't worry. I promise to keep you right, safe. Right, whatever. Listen, I have one last thing I need to take care of. Do you think it's really smart to go it's out and- It's something I have to do, and then I'll come to your office. <sighs> All right. What do I tell my boss? I'll speak with him. I told Dirge to have him call me. Disconnect your arm from the internet. I already did. I'm not stupid. I could tell she was upset with me. Can you not narrate your every thought? I sat in shock as I discovered Tiffany could read my thoughts. I wondered how many others could do the same. <sighs> HBD, I have searched the police records for anything about Tiffany Coffendaffer. Did you find anything? Oh no, I have not. But I did get a WPN for her to install. What could the Tian Lu have on her? Why not ask her, hmm? Uh, she doesn't trust me. Yet. Ah, yes, but she will. We have to protect her, Hans. I can't imagine what secret a crematory operator would have that the Chen Lu could exploit. Thank you, Miss Coffendaffer. My son was adamant about having a proper burial. He never wanted cremation. No one has to know what we did here tonight. It's just between your family and us. You promise no one else knows about any of this. Nobody else knows. I promise. This has been The Softboiled Detective. Written, directed, and produced by Cat Walker Shea. Music composed by Mike Fermansky. And sound designed by Silent Bite Studio. Starring the voices of B.K. Dawson as HBD and Hans. Cat Walker Shea as Tiffany and Grieving Mother. Nathan Waltering as Jimmy the Chair. Gondre Lewis as Pesci the Hot Plate. Sox Whitmore as Dirge and Robot Voice. Jade V. Robinson as Francesca. Lucia Shu as Ar Shin, Tim Briggs as Atland, Adam Lloyd as Delivery Bot. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned for the next episode.
Thank you for tuning in to the Soft Boiled Detective. We want to give a special shout out to our patrons on Patreon. Aries Jimenez, Liza, Ashley Kraft, Jessica Maroney, Casper Oliver, and Apocalypse Cowboy. Thank you so much for making this show possible.